everybody, welcome to Kimmel's Irish Pub. Tonight's movie, Death Wish. Death Wish 2018, uh, not with Charles Bronson, uh, but with Bruce Willis. So I'm kind of excited. Basically, it's the same story as the old one. Um, I, I, a man's family, um, something happens to them. I think they probably get killed and he embarks on his own mi mission for justice. I think they get killed. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but uh, he's a doctor um, in this one. He's a surgeon of some sort. So um, it should be interesting. And Bruce Willis, Vincent D'Onofrio, Elizabeth Shue, so, um, and Camilla Monroe, among other people. So I'm kind of excited, although IMDb only has it at a 6.5. Who knows? I think it's going to be good. Hour and 46 minutes. I'll get into it a little bit more and uh, share with you more details. So stick around. Hey everybody, we're watching Death Wish, and we're at the 38 minute, 34 second mark. A little early check in here for you. want to catch you up real quick. Um, I don't remember the, all the details of the first one with Charles Bronson. I know there was like Death Wish 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, so it might be the same, but uh, we know essentially something happens to his family. He's a doctor, as I mentioned, Bruce Willis. He's married to Elizabeth Shue, and he has a daughter who's 17, just gets accepted into college. Um, and people, it's a, um, people break into his house. His brother is Vincent D'Onofrio, sorry. Um, and some people break into his house, um, to steal, because they know he's rich, he's a doctor, and things go bad. And, um, he, they hurt his family. And interestingly enough, they come to the hospital where he's working. They were supposed to go out for his birthday, he gets called into the hospital, and he goes into the hospital, he's there, and both his daughter and wife come into the hospital. I thought that was an interesting opportunity. Um, and I'm sure this has happened somewhere, but like he's a surgeon in the ER and what if he had the choice? He had to go to one or the other and you know, the other one wouldn't survive. Whatever kind of thing. Like what do you do in that situation? That doesn't happen. Um, not to spoil it for you, but uh, you know, I think he's prohibited from um, working on his family. I don't know. They kind of make it seem that way. Anyway, so now, uh, you know, he's dealing with all of that so far. So it felt a little bit longer, I'm surprised, because it, it's not like he immediately went into revenge mode or anything like that. So there's a little bit of development here um, to see. I, like I said, I don't remember. I'd have to look up. I'm going to look up the other one in between here um, to see. If, I always just remember Charles Bronson just going nuts. And maybe that's not the case. So um, that's where we are so far, a little development. He's trying, you know, like he's looking for the cops to help him. And what would you do in that situation where he lives in Chicago and he goes into the to the detective's office or whatever, and it's just a white board, a big board full of murders, you know, and his, you know, and his family's issue is right, you know, like in the midst of all of those things. So it's like, you know, he, they're not going to find anybody in Chicago. It's really hard to, to locate, so you're starting to lose hope. Um, and I think that's now where his character is going to start to change. So that's where we are so far. I wanted to catch up real quick. I might check in one more time. I might see you at the credits. You stick around and find out. I'll be back. Hey, everybody. We're at the credits of Death, Wh Death Wish. Sorry about that. And uh, I was going to do a quick check in right before I realized there was only 20 minutes left. So let's just uh, talk about it all together. So I think where I left off, you know, he was dealing with the tragedy. Um, of what happened to his family, and I'm not going to tell you everything, but um, you know, there's something that that kind of happens at the break-in during the break-in. Anyway, he doesn't immediately go off, and I like that. I like the fact that you know, like it would flip the switch on certain people, I think, and that would be the whole film of him plotting revenge and and going after these guys. That's not what happened. It develops, so it develops into his revenge plot, or or you know. Um, you know, him not feeling the cops are doing enough, and so he has to start taking matters into his own hands. So I thought that was well done. Um, and the other thing, too, I'm also not referencing the first film. I don't even remember. I knew what it was about. We knew the basic concept. But I, you know, I think they just, I'm trying to take it as they used that and made it their own. So I'm not going to compare it to that um, if you're a big Death Wish fan or anything like that. So, um, And so anyway, so he then eventually starts... Um, to, as I said, take matters in his own hands, but he becomes like a, a vigilante first. 
um, you know, and, and uh, you know, so that has its own little part before he can, you know, starts to um, invoke his revenge on different things. Uh, the other piece I like, they, they modernized it, of course, uh, but so much in the fact that, like, okay, GPS is utilized um, for certain features, um, which, you know, they didn't have in 1974. Um, and and the you know cell phone and smartphone access and trying to get into smartphones and using fingerprints um, don't want to get into it too much um, but uh, you know in social media so a lot of the things that's going on in this movie are being captured on cell phones and then being uploaded to social media so much that they're even creating memes about the stuff that's going on so they they threw in that little piece of flair that that was good I mean like again if you're separating the the, the the movies and looking at it for this is just a completely different movie with the same plot I think uh, I think that makes it better um, some of the the only really knock I have um, was I felt that he, you know as he's going around as a vigilante and, and seeking his revenge and things like that he's making it too easy for himself to get caught uh, it, just a, a real quick example he doesn't wear gloves you know he's a doctor I mean he has access to all kinds of gloves why don't wear gloves when you're going out and stuff like that? Um, so that's my only knock on, on this, I think, because it was fun. Um, I like it because I'm a father, I'm a family man, and if something like this would happen, would, would I have the courage to, to do all this kinds of stuff? I don't know, but it's fun, and hopefully that never happens to me or any, anybody or you or anything like that. So just leave this for the movies and then enjoy the action and, and everything that goes along with it. Um, uh, there, I did expe expect a little something different in the end, and I'm going to share that with you in a little bit. Um, but overall, I enjoyed the film, something to escape into. Uh, and I went to look at IMDb, and I, I think I told you the rating, whatever it was before, and I wanted to read some of their reviews, see what everybody else thought. Honestly, the first page, and I, and I, um, I sort by helpfulness. So you rate your IMDb reviews by how helpful that was. So I like to see how many people click it was helpful to them. Um, that's the first way I look at it. The whole page is 10s. So I, I don't know if re people really thought this was a 10 film that much, or are they paying people to do that so that rack up the scores? You know, I hear that theory that people do that on Amazon. Maybe they're doing it on IMDb and they're trying to get all these scores. But not only did they do that, you know, if they did do all that and they wrote all these things, because it has to be, I think, at least 50 characters whatever now they're also going in and collecting that was helpful that was helpful a lot of effort you know just to get an imdb rating up so me i'm, I'm i was probably gonna give it an eight i enjoyed it that much i thought it was good um i like vincent d'onofrio i thought you know um, bruce willis is bruce willis and this kind of action film he was really good um so i like that part um, and the, I forget the guy's name, he's from Breaking Bad, he was the cop in Breaking Bad, and, uh, the TV show, and he was also in this, so, I liked him as well, so I thought that it was all well done, I enjoyed it a lot, and I'm gonna give it an 8. So there you have it, that's why I'm giving it an 8, and, uh, yeah, um, so that's really it. I want to share with you my theory, because I believe that there's an alternate ending, but... I'm not going to share that with you unless you want to hear it, so I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you haven't watched a film at this point, turn me off. I mean, it's not a spoiler, so it's up to you, but it's it's going to it's gonna give you my theory that I thought that didn't come true. So it's up to you if you want to decide, but I want to give you a second to go ahead and turn me off. All right, so this is a quick theory. So Vincent D'Onofrio um, in this film is his brother. And it seems like he has a felony at some point, and uh, prior to the whole movie taking place, and uh, you know struggles to keep money, um, and eventually he asks, or in the, in the beginning he asks to borrow two thousand dollars from Bruce Willis. Then Bruce Willis says no problem, he'll give it to him. And I'm watching this entire film, and I'm thinking, okay, so there's a break in where they're robbing Bruce Willis and his family. They know there's a safe. They say, you just got to take us to the safe and let us in. Nobody's going to get hurt. And, of course, everything goes bad. Um, but them robbing him. Um, now, I know they knew how he was going to be home because of the valet. So if you've seen it, you, you know that. But um, 
I really felt that Vincent D'Onofrio was the mastermind behind all this. I think he tried to set up the three burglars to go in and rob him so he could have money. Didn't want anybody to get hurt, and you know, and he was going to take all the money, split it between them, and, and you know, and nobody would know the wiser. That was my theory the entire movie, and I was wrong. Um, so if you've seen it, you know that's not really what happened. But I bet you, on the DVD, that there's an alternate ending and he's involved. I don't know if it's going to be on the DVD, but I bet you they toyed with that idea because it was right there. Um, but it was a little too obvious, so maybe not. Uh, anyway. That was my theory that I wanted to share with you. If you watched a film, you thought the same thing, or if you know anything more about it, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Um, fun movie to watch. I enjoyed it. Uh, check it out. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Kimmel's Irish Pub.